Most of us who live active, outdoor lives have a shortage of storage space for our gear. It doesn't take long for a collection of lawn equipment, bicycles, wood cutting machinery, recreational vehicles, and building materials to add up. And conveniently protecting all this stuff from the weather at a reasonable cost can be a challenge. That's why I began looking at portable shelters back in 2007. There are dozens of manufacturers across Canada and the U.S., and they charge a wide range of different prices for what superficially seems like the same kind of shelter. At first, I found all this choice confusing. But in the end, I opted to buy a shelter made by a company on Canada's east coast called CoverTech. I'm going into my third winter with this shelter now, and it continues to work flawlessly. CoverTech also offers retractable awnings, screen rooms, custom tarps, and even backyard skating rink liners. I chose their 16 by 30 foot shelter for my property, and though there are plenty of manufacturers selling shelters for less than CoverTech, when the wind blows hard and rain or snow is pelting down, there are specific technical reasons why I'm not worried about my stuff. And the island property where I live certainly gets its fair share of wind. So here's a quick tour of my shelter, some tips on site preparation and assembly that I learned from my own installation, and technical reasons why I expect this shelter to hold up for a long time. I chose to install my shelter on a raised pad of compacted limestone screenings. You could get away with putting yours on grass, but an aggregate base means freedom from mud and ensures that water doesn't drain into the shelter underneath the walls. One of the reasons I chose CoverTech was the thickness of fabric they used. My model has what's called 14 ounce fabric. This number refers to the weight of one square meter of material, and the expected lifespan of this cover is 15 years before UV rays weaken it to the point where a new cover needs to be installed. I also like the fact that all materials are made in Canada, including the hot dipped galvanized tubing used for the frame. It's more than 1 5 8 inch in diameter on my shelter. The cross braces are welded, not bolted, and all joints fit together flawlessly when I assembled them. Resistance to high winds is one of the first things that people wonder about when it comes to a fabric shelter, and there are three specific features that eliminate this worry from my mind. First of all, the bottom of the entire frame of my shelter is anchored in 10 places using what are called duckbill anchors. These have a sharp, swiveling metal point attached to a braided cable with a loop in the end. A steel installation rod fits into the hollow end of the duckbill, allowing it to be pounded into the ground with a sledgehammer. Place the tip of the duckbill where you want the anchor to be, with the driving rod interlocked into its hollow end. Then pound the mushroom end of the rod, driving the duckbill into the earth. Another feature I like about my shelter are the support straps. They go over the completed structure and cover, offering an additional layer of safety. Some people use rope or nylon strapping to connect the straps with anchors, but I use galvanized fence wire tensioned with wind-up tighteners to get just the right amount of pressure against the structure. The wire doesn't stretch, and it's easy to dial in more tension if needed. The roll-up door that came standard on my shelter uses a galvanized metal pipe set into a sleeve in the bottom of each door. Now, normally, the doors are held closed with bungee cords and hooks only. But when high winds roll in, I also strap the bottom pipe using strap clamps. These fit into lugs welded into the frame, especially for this purpose. Strap clamps keep the door completely shut, no matter how high the winds, while also imparting more racking strength to the overall structure. I ended up special ordering two features that have proven themselves very useful over the years. Although it doesn't increase the durability of the shelter, I paid extra for a system of ratchets for tightening the tarp onto the bottom pipes of the frame, instead of the standard system of nylon laces woven through grommets along the bottom of the tarp. Ratchets make for faster assembly, and they also make it easy to tighten the tarp if it ever gets loose. I like the look of a drum-tight cover, 
and this also makes for a stronger shelter. An optional second roll-up door at the other end of the shelter makes it convenient to access stuff from both ends without shuffling everything else around to get at it. Double doors have proven to be a huge benefit in my experience. One thing that could have been better about my CoverTech shelter was the assembly instructions. They weren't as clear as they could be, and after putting my shelter up, I mentioned my concerns to the people who run the company. They agreed with me and asked me to write an instruction package to solve this problem. All CoverTech shelters of the type I bought now include this easy-to-follow instruction package. Buying a portable shelter involves a certain amount of risk if you can't actually see an example of the model before ordering. I did buy mine sight unseen, but in the end I had nothing to worry about. I'd be really surprised if there's a better shelter available anywhere.